2014 BMW M5, the F10 generation, the generation that came right after the E60. The E60 is loved by so many, including myself, because naturally aspirated V10, need I say more. This is the first time they actually went down in cylinder count because the original M5, the first two generations, inline six, inline six, then we had the V8 with the E39, then the V10 with the E60, and now we're downsizing to a V8, 4.4 liters, but for the first time, it's not naturally aspirated. It is a twin turbocharged V8, normally putting out 552 horsepower and around 502 pound-feet of torque, but the owner blew the rod bearings. It's a known issue on this generation of uh, BMW M5, and he replaced it. He was saying he replaced it with a forged engine that makes a little bit more power, like 560, so it's pretty close to the original. We've got aftermarket charge pipes, but by and large, this car is it's gonna behave pretty stock. The M5s get heavier and heavier with each generation. This one's now tipping the scales. I think it's around 42 or 4,300 pounds. K40 scan active. <laughs> GPS connected. All right, I guess he's got some uh, radar laser detectors. Now, very similar to the F80 M3, we have different modes we can select. So we can go, let's start on the, on the mildest. So we're gonna go for comfort and efficient and whatnot for the uh, throttle, for the suspension, and for the steering. This car still feels actually pretty modern being you know, 10 years old now, I'm actually quite impressed. I like that we have analog gauges still. The screen, yeah, sure, maybe it's a little bit lower resolution than what we have today, but still feels like a very modern interior. This one, of course, the seven speed DCT, although you can also get this in America as a six speed manual. Okay, now even though we've lost two cylinders from the V10 going to the V8, we have a lot of torque because of these turbos. You know, the way this drives, it's actually kind of reminiscent of a larger F80 M3. You have this immense power, you have this turbo lag, and you have a lot of numbness. Oh my god. <laughs> the brakes aren't quite as solid and grabby and meaty as on that F80 M3. Because remember, BMW with the, M the M5s, they're rounding the edges a little bit. They're making this a little bit smoother, a little bit, a little bit softer, a little bit more comfortable to drive. And now let's change all the settings to the sportiest. Yeah, the steering instantly significantly heavier, but as it is with these, you know, sport modes on the steering, it just adds artificial weight. You don't actually get more feedback and more feeling. The suspension completely transformed. Actually a very large difference going from comfort to this sportiest setting, Sport Plus much stiffer now. Look at that middle setting. I love when you can feel a large difference between the various settings because then you have more character like, or more personalities, I should say, to the car, depending on your mood, depending on what you're trying to get out of that drive. Look how immediate this, this shift is. I'm not even you know, giving it much throttle. Generally, the harder you're pushing a car, the faster it's gonna respond to manual input. But even just cruising here, third gear, fourth gear, very quick DCT and quite smooth too, even in these sportier settings, which I appreciate. Holy crap. Autobahn missile. You know, the front end, it has this strange numbness, disconnectedness to it that gives you a little bit of pause as you push it. Because when it's not speaking to you, when you don't have that tight feedback loop knowing what's happening with the front end, then you don't necessarily want to push the car as hard. You don't want to be surprised if it misbehaves. So this is one of those cars that you have to build trust with it 
over time. It's one of those cars where it's got to open up to you a little bit. You warm up to it because you go in too hot, you're not really sure what to expect, and you want to you wanna only push as far as you feel comfortable based on what the car is telling you. Jeez. You know, getting a little bit of a little bit of feedback through the wheel, it actually feels like there's a little bit more feedback here than in the F80 M3. Get a little bit more texture. Not so much weighing up, weighting up uh, mid corner. I'm always glad when DCTs behave themselves at low speeds because especially older, you know, earlier DCTs sometimes had issues there. This one has no problems starting from a stop. But Autobahn Missile is probably the best way to describe this car because you're not getting a very sharp driving experience. You're, you're nice and insulated and comfortable, but it is very capable. It does have a good amount of adjustment between drive modes, which is nice because it's kind of frustrating when you press a button on a car going to sport mode, you can barely feel the difference. Here, you definitely can. It's actually uh, quite substantial between the different modes. Really immediate shifts, and I'm loving how smooth and instant they are. Not quite Porsche PDK, but the next best thing. And similar to the F80, you're now getting some turbo lag when you get into the power. And that's new for the, for the M3 and the M5, right? Because before they were always naturally aspirated. But based on the direction they're going, where it's, hey, let's focus on performance and capacity rather than driver involvement, I think that's fine. It's perhaps more fitting for the M5 because the M5 was never about having a super raw and connected driving experience. So if you have a bit of turbo lag and the car isn't as immediate and responsive, that's okay. That wasn't really the mission of the M5. You know, I'm taking a sweeper at a, a bit higher speed and I can feel the car, it's like a little bit floaty. It's a little bit you know, part of it's the weight and the way that they've tuned the chassis that it's still comfortable. But this is a car that you really want to enjoy as a daily driver, as a a powerful, you know, as a powerful, capable, comfortable car. But it's not a car you really want to push beyond seven tenths on a road. It. It's not very communicative. It doesn't, mid-corner, it it behaves, I'm trying to figure out what it is. There's something funny about it mid-corner. It's a little bit floaty. It's not as sharp and communicative. It's not as planted. It didn't inspire confidence mid-corner. And, um, you know, again, that's not really the mission of the car, but if you're looking for a vehicle that you can push eight or more tenths, it's not really gonna come alive and, and be as enjoyable you're pushing it like that. It's definitely a car you want to more cruise in. And that was even when I was in the uh, Sport Plus setting, when I was having those mid-corner weirdness. Now I'm going to Comfort. But you can see who this vehicle is for, right? It's, it's not for the young single dude in his 20s that wants to have a a great time on the K's and on track. This is obviously a car that's for an older guy or lady that probably has a family, wants something practical, comfortable, fast. And um, I think we'll leave it there. I think the F10 is, it's more torquey. It's, oh my God, that sound. <laughs> Crashing control kicking in constantly. You can see that light flickering. This thing has so much torque, so much power. You have a much nicer interior, much more modern. Materials seem a little bit nicer too than the E60. But in the E60, you have the naturally aspirated V10, the character, the uniqueness of the car, the active bolsters, which I think are just a gimmick. They're not really all that useful. But that car... The, the E60, the predecessor to this, I would say it feels a little bit more special. And 
the F10 is more capable, it's faster. I think this might be the first uh, M5 with a sub 4 0 to 60, because uh, I think it's 3.9. If I'm not mistaken, the, the E60 was just above that. So it's faster than ever, it's more comfortable, it's you know, a few hundred pounds heavier, but ultimately still a very impressive vehicle from a technical perspective. But I'm curious what you guys think. The F10, the fifth generation of M5. Let me know with a comment down below. Big thanks to Fenton Sun for the Zygon YouTube channel for making this review possible. Go check out our other M5 reviews, including the E60, linked in the description. Check out our M5 playlist. We have an M3 playlist too. We're reviewing all the BMWs today. Much love, my friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. Visit Jabal and Cars if you want to see your car reviewed on the channel. And I'll see you all in that next one.